Welcome back to week 36 of the West Marches, going into hour number three here. Um, Galahan. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, let's cut back hey, to me guys, and Galahan. It's me, I'm Galahan. But um, there's just no point. <laughs> so I'm talking so to him and tough. Here. Look at my sword, I kill things. I'm like Gats from Berserk. Here we go. Yep, <laughs> awesome. Okay, so. All right, Doc, so, all right. <laughs> 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 That's a pretty good impression. Okay, Thanks. so uh, right. we're still out on the streets of um, of Coins Flip, and you're walking with this old man. Let's find out what his name is. It's fine. I didn't want to play Dungeons & Dragons today anyway. His name is Johnny. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny. Okay, so this old man named Johnny Appleseed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Johnny Appleseed. He's a lamp lighter. Yeah, he says, well, uh, what, what is it you wanted to know, young persons, young, uh, you and your daughter? I just go, I, I, I like, immediately silence till I was just like, uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, And I'm like, oh, you know, we're, we're new, uh, we're new around here, and I was actually looking for an old friend uh, named Dina. I don't know if you know Adina. Um, really popular, hangs out with a lot of people. Uh, why don't you go ahead and roll something? Man, so okay. like... My highest yeah, roll, please. Deception? <laughs> so like playing different games, right? It's it's really interesting to play something like Swan Song, or Stars Without Number, where there's explicitly a skill to see if like you know a person in the area, or yeah. like a, basically you, you could just do like a luck check to be like, oh, are you lucky enough that this guy knows the person that you're talking to? But there's nothing like that in Fifth Ed, and it would be so Ooh. useful. Dude, it's because you have to know every single NPC that exists or doesn't exist, and then say whether or not they're around. That's your I, job. I know these two NPCs, I just don't know if they know each other. Um, why don't you give me a charisma saving throw, Darius, and then that will determine whether or not these two know each other. I, whoa, whoa, changing the rules, Steve. They do Are not. Are you kidding? Yeah, no. I was like, oh, Dina, yes, and died in 43, I think. Mm, terrible loss, terrible loss. Made the best meat pies this side of the garden district. Uh, really sad times. How do you know Dina? You look at, like not much older than that yourself. You were probably merely two or three when she passed on. But uh, fond memories? Mom, 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 I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> and I start pulling. I no, mom. Sorry, dad. Dad, I'm I'm hungry. Oh, dad. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, the, this put. this old man, Johnny. He he reaches into his cloak. He says, "Oh, is your daughter hungry? Here, listen. Have this." And he pulls out a candied apple. Oh, I accept. Oh. <laughs> he, he hands it to I you. Was like... <laughs> yeah, he he pats you on the head and says, "Oh, what a nice daughter you have." Ah, uh, and I, I I sort of like I sort of like. Like, uh, squeeze uh, Tilly's arm. I'm like, what do you say? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very welcome. I think this You're is the crazy. longest that an old man has lived on the West Marches ever in the history of old men. I, I, well, I want to go over there and kill him myself. <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't question. shoot him with an arrow this the cliff time. Above, so. Galahad just dives down with a great <laughs> sword. Yes. <laughs> We're up on the roof. Like, Instantly no longer a paladin, but it was worth it. Yeah. All right. I, I sort of like I look at the old man, I'm like, no, no, no. I think we I think we have the wrong Dina. See, she's she's definitely around my age. Uh pretty pretty attractive. And you know, maybe maybe can you like point me somewhere where I maybe I could find someone who knows the area and the people here a little bit more, old man? Oh, bear. I saw some uh, some young hooligans go into that house with the blue door over that way. Possibly they might know more. Uh, but uh, really, you don't want to be out in the coin flip after dark. It's not the nicest part of town. Uh, why don't you find a nice inn to rest in? I can recommend you one. Uh, I, I shake my yeah, head and I'm like... Perhaps you <laughs> should go uh, check on our lambs. It's getting very dark and the chicken eggs... Uh, uh, Is I'm your like, child yes. simple? I don't <laughs> think she's speaking very well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she's 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 gets nervous when she's around around strangers. So I think I think we're gonna go into this house. Uh, yeah, those are some of my friends. I'll I'll just go hit them up and see see if they can if they've seen anyone. 
Uh, uh, very well. Thanks. Well, uh, have a nice evening and steer clear of the face rats. Remember the face. And I flip him like a gold coin as like we're leaving. Yeah, he catches it and then he he, he just like bites it and then <laughs> puts it all the way into his mouth and you hear him swallow as you walk away. What? Grigori. You hear on the door. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm probably like doing the last bits of the like table setting, right? Like I'm handing Galahan like, no, no, salad fork goes next to other fork. No, on other side. Why is this Ugh. so complicated? Why can't you just have one fork? I don't know. I hate forks. I eat everything with my hands. Is it important to keep up? Anyway, uh, and I like take my apron off and I like ball it up and throw it in the other room so he doesn't see me in it. Uh, and I'm like, okay, you pour wine. I will go get our guest. And I, right. I like go to the I go to the door. Yeah, yeah. You open the door and there's a man standing there. He's tall and thin, uh, and his face is a little bit pinched. He has glasses on, a very thin wireframe glasses. Uh, and and he's got his hands just straight down by his side, and he peers down at you. He says, "Hello." Um, what's this guy's name again? Loranth. L L O R A N T H. Put him on my list. Okay, so yeah. Loranth. Uh, so yeah, I say to him, uh, "I'm like, uh, huh? You must be Loranth. We are friends of Alanis. Uh, come in." And I like take a step back and gesture him to come inside. Yes. Here, I brought this for you. And he brings out a vase from behind his back. And it's got a beautiful spiral of bright blue flowers that are, are just now opening in bloom. And he holds it out in front of him. Yeah, I take, I take it from him. I'm like, oh, thank you. It's very nice. Come inside. Of, of course. Yes, and he, he strolls in, and he, he takes off his cloak. And as he removes his cloak, he looks even more skeletal uh, as he, he removes the bulk from himself. He's probably, you know, six foot four, maybe 140 pounds. Okay. Uh, is he armed? Is he wearing armor? Like, what's his... I give him the PC up and down. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's wearing armor. He's just wearing clothes. He doesn't look armed. He has no obvious weapons on him. Um, he's He's got a, a small... Uh, like notebook in like hanging on one side of, of his belt and uh, it looks like there's a pen that's attached that's about it that's all he's he's brought okay all right so we uh, yeah I, I take him into the I take his, his cloak and I, yeah. and I like hang it up on a peg and uh, I lead him into the um, uh, I lead him into the room into the like dining hall or whatever nice uh, he's also got his hairstyle is just a thin black tonsure at the top of his head. He says, Oh, well, it's a very nice house that you have. Yes, I'm just uh, looking after it for friend. I'm not from here. Oh, well, this, welcome uh, to our fair city. Yeah, I put my, I put my hand out and I, uh, I say to him, uh, I'm like, uh, I am Dr. Grigori. Doctor? I shake his hand. I am Lorenth. And he, he, he holds out his hand kind of weakly. Limply, letting you grasp it. It's bony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he is shakes. He, is it. he like? Is he like cold, or does he feel like nah, a he's, nice? He's normal human temperature. Okay. Um. Yeah. And um. He says, "Yes, I, I hear you have uh, inquiry into Ilanus said said you were curious about glass making. Yes. Well, I I can tell you all about it. There are a number of prominent glass makers over in." In, in the district of gardens, including myself. I am not sure what it is that Alanis is telling you, but let me introduce you to my friend. And I, I gesture to, to Galahan and uh, I say, this is Galahan. He and I, hand out. He and I have a little project we are working on. And oh. uh, I say, Sid, let us have a drink. We will explain everything to you. Very well. He sits and he, he fixes his big owl-like eyes on Callahan. Yeah, and I pour, him, I, I pour him some wine. Yeah, he accepts the cup from you. Okay, so, uh, so I'm like, yes, we've, uh, we've come to the city to find someone who can help us. We, well, Callahan, why don't you tell him what you have? Callahan kind of like 
thinks himself, and he's like, don't lose your appetite now. And then he kind of like produces this swaddled bundle onto the table. Yeah. And like you see, slips. you see Lorenth sort of like he puts a hand on the table and sets down his cup and he's peering at the bundle very intently. I just, I just slowly unwrap it to reveal like the black surface of the egg. <sighs> and he's like got both of his hands up, just hovering over the surface of the egg. Where did you get it? It's not important. Uh, are there more? Is it just is it just the one? Just the one. Did you take it from from her? Uh huh. Her her the mother. Did you take it from the mother? Oh no, is, no. Is she no. following you? No, we found it in the clutches of some goblins. By Nyanth. What a treasure. Yes, that's what I said. Can I touch it? Yeah, feel free. He puts his hands on it and he says, It is, it is hot. It is alive. By the gods, what have you brought me? We were hoping that yeah. you could actually tell us. It's is not what this egg is now that counts, is what egg will be. We are hoping to help it along. You wish to hatch the dragon? Yes. Something like that. Ah. This is... This is amazing. You don't know what you've given me. Of course, yes. Yes, we shall get started right away. Well, but... Do you know what it entails? Are you sure? Are you sure this is what you want? It's just kind of like winging it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of our thing. Well, let ah, let us eat. Let us drink. I can tell you all about it. Please, you have a uh, you have something to refresh us. Yes, I think. This yeah, is yeah. All. I, I, he he brings out a, a pale bone-colored handkerchief and he mops his brow. I like this nerd. So, uh, yeah, I, I get up and I go and, like, um, you know, put together some plates of the, like, meat and root vegetables that I've prepared. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and I bring them back and set the table and sit down. I guess I probably probably is appropriate for us to make a toast before we eat. Uh, sure. So I, 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 look, I look at the plate and I, like, hold my, my cup up and I'm like, here's to old friends and I look at Galahan, and then I look at my plate, <laughs> like just real quick. <laughs> and then I'm like, "And to new friends." And I, I look at Lorenth. Cheers. We kind of clink. Yeah. Yes. And Lorenth, Lorenth clinks glasses with you. He says, "To new friends." And then he glances at the egg, and old ones. And then he drinks. Totally. Yeah. Cool. So cool. you're you're all three of you are sitting around and eating your meal. Uh, Lorianth compliments you on your, your chef skills. Yeah, I take a bite and I'm like, what kind of meat is this? It's delicious. I'm oh, like, is, uh, is a pig. Uh, I bought in market some time ago. You did good, have... Doc. This is good shit. I nod. Yes. Well, I suppose if you've come to me, then are you familiar with the process by which dragons hatch their eggs? I've got an inkling that uh, it's something to do with blood. Blood. Ah, uh, why? What makes you think that? Because whenever blood gets on this egg, it heats up. We uh, are uh, living very interesting life, and eggs seems to respond to some of the more interesting parts of it. Yes, yes, I think the doctor has has it better. You see, dragons they. It's difficult to hatch a dragon egg. It, it may not work. We may fail. I want you to know that from the beginning. It's hard. Dragons do it by instinct. They, they jealously guard their clutches, of which usually only a single egg becomes viable at all. The dragon, the mother, she builds a crucible and lays the eggs within it. She bathes the eggs in her poisonous breath. One by one, the eggs crack, shatter, 
and die under the withering treatment of her fires. They roam the surrounding countryside, devastating it, whipping up a frenzy of emotion from the surrounding inhabitants, beating this this miasma into a vortex with their wings, bathing their eggs in the raw emotional energy of the countryside. I think that might be what is causing the egg to heat as the the creatures you encounter as they die, their fear, terror seeps into the air, reacts with the creature inside, giving it strength, energy. I'm watching Galahan for, for his reaction to all this. You Galahan's see, just kind of nodding, like processing internally the best way he can hatch this egg. Dragons... Physical material provides only sustenance for dragons, not satisfaction. Dragons are farmers and eaters of woe, terror, despair, lust, greed, envy, and more. All of the high emotion of, of the humanoid races. They I am, crave I'm it. Liking, I am liking these dragons more and more the more I learn of them. They are the king beasts. Lords of their domain by elemental right. You see, weaker minds, like us, we seek them out. We worship them. Strong minds serve them. Perhaps, perhaps we are the strong ones. <laughs> yeah, this, guy can, this guy can get down with the weird. I'm into it. Yeah, he's weird. I like it. Yeah, I'm just guys just nodding like playing with his bed. <clears throat> yes. So we don't want to waste our time and energy on this. What are you thinking is most efficient way to uh, harvest emotion for this little thing? Uh, well, I'm not entirely certain. We would need to try a certain number of things. Uh, first, we would need to build some sort of a crucible some sort of a place where we can funnel the poisons and fires that we need across the egg, bathe it, and temper it. And then we would need to create some sort of a, some kind of a disaster or, or orgy of, of primal emotion within Pyrnor itself. I, I, I laugh and I'm like, there's no need to create primal disastrous orgy. I have disaster covered. Orgy is in other neighborhood being busy right now. Ah. <laughs> Go ahead, laughs. Good. Yes. Well, uh, we would probably need to to seriously impact one of the districts of the city. If, if not the whole city itself, it would be dangerous. But I think worth it. This guy's morality like, has just gone out the window then, huh? He's just like, we should maybe burn the whole city. <laughs> That's what he's saying, absolutely. What well, is 100, 1,000, 10,000 human lives to the life of a dragon? As you say, they are better than we are. Exactly. Exactly. Now then, yes, we need to bathe this egg in fire, acid, poison, more build some sort of a funnel, a crucible, as I said, to focus these elements around it. The temperatures and forces at work will be much more than any living man could withstand. We whip the city into a frenzy of emotion and funnel it through the crucible. I, I already know of a few abandoned buildings around the city that we could use. And so, if we do this, who is going to try and stop us? Oh, well, it would depend on who knew. Yes, who does it know? would, wouldn't it? And I kind of like look at him like, are you going to keep your mouth shut about this? Uh, you seem pretty excited. Yeah, do you want to do an insight check? No, I think I'll just straight up ask him. I'll be like, "Yeah, you know, do you have friends you expect to be telling about this? You seem very enthusiastic, but it's important uh, to keep quiet. I am a... I am a loner. I don't interact with others very much. I, uh, I tend to keep to myself. I'm a, just a glass worker. I live in the District of Gardens. 
hide myself away and collect books, scrolls, texts, anything that can tell me more about these great gods. Well, if you're lucky, old man, maybe you'll live long enough to see one in the flesh. Yes, maybe so. But who have you told? So far, only us and two of our companions. Others know of the egg, but not our plan to hatch it. We were being followed on the plains by some tribe, but they're all dead now. This is what happens when people cross us. Excellent. Good. You can handle yourselves then. Very well. Ah, uh, do you have paper, something to draw upon? I could sketch a map. We could look at some possible options. Yes, I think there is something like that around here. And I'll like get up and go into like the study or whatever and find something that we can. We can During this whole with. conversation, Galahad's been like head in his hands. He's like mired in thought over the conflict of what's required against yeah. like what he's been taught. Mm. And so like he's just been processing. Yeah, I want you and I to have a conversation about mm. that after this dude leaves. Yeah, yeah. So he's cool. been like pretty silent for the whole dinner and kind of like let let the doc take the lead. Cool. Yeah. So I think like we gotta we I, we talked to this guy about what the overarching kind of plan is, right? That we need to like find a ritual space to prepare, um, make that our our kind of funnel, and then instigate some chaos. Um, my concern is like if we need how big does this need to be? Do we need workers? Like are we gonna need to hire people? Are we gonna need to pretend that it's something else? Like, do we need to buy property? And, like, you know, he said, like, uh, he has some ideas of abandoned buildings, but it'd be easier. I mean, fuck it. We could just, like, buy a, buy a warehouse and then tell people, oh, we're, we're, like, renovating it, but really be making this yeah you know, this thing. we got to have like, cover. So you, you present some of these ideas to him when, when you get back with the sheets of paper. Um, and actually, like, I, I want to go over and see what's going on with... Um, with Tilly okay. and, and Darius. So like you you come back, you've been formulating these sort of concerns in your head. Um, and he, he's been sort of eyeing Galahan and he, he, he places one of his dry older hands on, on your hand, Galahan, and he says, you don't know what a great gift you've given me. Thank you. Your loyalty, it will not go unrewarded. And then diagonal scene wipe. Yeah. Cool. Darius, Tilly, what are you doing? Dude, Steven, that character was fucking awesome. <laughs> I love it. Like that was that was Steven, fucking awesome to we've, watch. We've we've talked about this before as far as the West Marchers goes. The only way to survive, either as a PC or an NPC, is to just be as weird to as just get fuck. down like, with the just weird, bro. Get as because the weird people survive, right? That's why we're yep. still alive. So that's why this NPC didn't get killed because you're like, oh, kindred spirit, you're also as fucked up as we are. Exactly. I'm not weird. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying, like the acting involved in like the character. I was like, that's pretty fucking good. I don't know. Just throwing some. You got chops, man. I just want <laughs> to acknowledge Ella. it. Yeah, no don't problem. Worry. Man. I got I got the orgy covered. No, I'm walking in. I'm already walking in. Probably like if they have beer and they've already grabbed a beer. Uh, I don't think they have beer. So you you enter into Aww. the house. You, you say eggs and lambs, uh, and immediately the door swings open and there's there's like a large uh, round woman who ushers you in and closes the door behind you, and she turns you down a couple corridors and then down a staircase, and um, and as you come in, you see just like this underground tavern filled with people. Uh, all gambling and playing games of dice and cards, and uh, like they're they're like tables set up where there are grubs sort of inching their way towards each other and then biting at each other, and men are standing around and throwing money and cheering as as this all goes down. Um, they it's hand an, you it's an underground tavern. There's no beer. Well, what they hand <laughs> you are little tiny like shot glass sized like champagne glasses filled oh, okay. with some dark green liquor. And, and that's I, what I, everybody's drinking in here. I take it and I hand it to Tilly and I'm like, you first. Uh, how many women are down here? Like that, it's that 50, are just 50. Like, okay. Yeah. So okay, I don't, I don't. Are there anybody? Are there any halflings at all? There's just I'm probably all alone on that one. But uh, let me see. Hang like on. Like how uncomfortable? I, I'm trying to like get this. Yeah. How, how at home do you feel? Yeah. Exactly. Um, hang on. Let me look at my stuff. 
like, am I walking in and I'm I'm kind of a weird sight to these people being so, you know, um, small? Uh, so there's probably two or three non-humans in here. Um, no, none of them are halflings. Okay. Um, I kind of look at the, the you know... Uh, liquid that she gave me or he gave me and and kind of look back up and I'm like is 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 this safe I, the, I the just, woman yeah no no the uh the 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 glass uh, the, yeah, glass. the glass but you're yeah. you're asking the woman no I think no no, no, no I'm sorry me, right? I, I spoke I keep looking at pocket I think female so I'm actually asking Darius like it's cool roleplay has a long history of misgendering characters by accident because people are switched just ask wheat about how that feels <laughs> <laughs> um so i just look up at darius and i and i say like is it what is this what is this safe you know i look around the room to see like other people are obviously drinking this and and do i like are they drunk like oh, do, yeah. do they appear like, drunk yeah and so i, I looked at him like trust me you'll be all right all right tilly uh Bottoms up and takes a shot, kind of swishes it around in her mouth first to kind of get a taste. What does it taste like? Uh, it's minty. It's like mint and licorice. Okay. I swallow it, and uh, immediately after I swallow it, I start, I kind of lick my caramel apple that I've got still from the old man as like nice. a chaser. Yeah, so, absolutely. I get down uh, like level with Tilly and I look at I look at you dead in the eyes and I say, Stay by my side no matter what, but keep your eyes open. Anything suspicious, anything at all, tell me. I, I, I nod and uh just nod. And I pat her I pat you on the shoulder and I'm just like, and and don't take any more of those. <laughs> <laughs> so she's probably a lightweight. <laughs> Tilly <laughs> Would you make a constitution saving throw? I absolutely uh, would. Oh. Huh? Uh, I hope I'm clicking the right. Is it that? Yep. Yes. You made Ooh. it. Yeah. Okay. So you feel this warmth just spread through your body. And then all of a sudden you just see bright pops of color sort of exploding off in the dim light uh, in, at the borders of the room. And you just see them. They're just kind of distracting you. And it's probably like one every two or three seconds as you're looking around, but it's not like, it's definitely very strongly placed within the environment. It's not some sort of overlay that you're just seeing. It's like out from behind a chair, you'll see like light flash and actually cast shadows. Um, and it's like bright blues and greens and vermilions and chartreuses. Yeah. Um, I sort of look back at Darius and I say, you know, this this is a this is a wonderful place, and I'm sort of looking around at all the colors that are popping up, and I'm I'm kind of just taking it all in, and uh, yeah, just kind of standing there, staring off. It looks like. Well, I sort of I, I immediately recognize what's going on, so I I grab because I've I've been involved in the party scene, so I grab Tilly by like the the cloth of the shoulder, and I just drag you along with me. Nice. And go towards the stiv, stiv. Yeah, Stiv. You see him. You see him around one of the grub fight tables in the back. And I walk up and I place. I I sort of like position Tilly to where Tilly's right behind me, and then I put my hand on Stiv's shoulder. I'm like, so how's that look? Uh, he looks over to you. And says, Oh, hey, uh, Darius. Was that your name? Yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, welcome yeah. to the welcome to the club. Uh, it's it's going well. Check it out. And he, he gestures to one of the large grubs, which has two large black stripes down its back. Uh, and it sort of like peels back uh, like a large roll of fat over its face. And it reveals this circular um, serrated jaw just and it, it's sort of it's almost like uh, the sandworms from Dune where they've got like four serrated, you know, sort of portions. It opens up and it bites into the shoulder of the grub straight across from it. And a bunch of people around the table cheer as it savages and, and thrashes around, taking a chunk out of the it's shoulder sort of like, the grub. I sort of like pat Tilly and I point towards the grubs just to give Tilly something like crazy to look at while yeah. tripping. <laughs> I just look at it like, like everything that happens. Do I feel drunk? Do I feel like... You're tipsy. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. sure, okay. So I'm just looking at it like, and all I go is, 
cool. <laughs> I just look at it. Uh, nice. And I look over at uh, uh, Sti- Stiv, is it? Stiv? Yeah. I look up and I, and I just look at him and I just say, you've got a purple face. And I start <laughs> to kind of reach out and I'm like wanting to kind of touch and I slap, it. I slap the hand and I look nice. at Stiv and I'm like, don't worry. She, uh, she's kind of a lightweight. Good stuff, though. This is some good shit. Even yeah. though I, I'm like lying, though, because I didn't take any, but I'm going to pretend like I kind of feel something. Yeah. He, he he agrees. Yeah, it's uh it's part of the atmosphere. So uh, listen, what uh what are you in town for? What do you, what did what did you want? You wanted to ask me something till oh, I took I'm all like, your money. <laughs> I laugh. I'm like, oh no problem, man. I'm used to I'm used to getting bad luck sometimes. And it's like speaking of bad luck, couldn't find any ladies, but it looks like there are plenty over here. And I like sort of check one out across the way, and I'm like, look at the rack on that one. <laughs> uh, he turns around. He says. Oh, her? Listen, she's uh, she's more trouble than she's worth. Why don't I introduce you to uh, to Jill? I'm like, oh, well, hold on a second. See, I'm actually here for an old friend. Female, female friend, if you, if you know what I'm saying. Not sure girlfriend. if you know her, though. Okay, uh, yeah. Girlfriend's... Mm, I, I don't know if I want to say girlfriend. Uh, complicated. I mean, you know, no, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Oh, Listen, yeah. you know, sometimes you want to you wanna get in bed with them, but you don't want to deal with them outside of it. Like, I, I get it. Oh, well, I, actually, Tilly, cuts you know. in, Tilly cuts in pretty abruptly and goes, you have a girlfriend? Looking up at... <laughs> you just see me, like, put my hand on Tilly's face and just shove <laughs> Tilly away. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> like, just, just ignore her. She's... Like I said, anyway, anyway, no, she, she took something from me. I, I need to get it back. You know, just, it's a family, it's a family heirloom. And I just, I let her borrow it and she just, you know, it didn't work out. And you I know, listen, you know, man, um, <laughs> when a girl takes your virginity, you can't get it back from her, buddy. It's just, he slaps you on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, and I'm sorry, like, I'm, I'm like, trust me, no, 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 that yeah. was gone a long time ago. I'm not looking for that. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Yeah. But and I'm like, no, no. What? Uh, her name's Dina. Do you know a Dina? Uh, yeah, a couple. Uh, why? What do you? Well, which? What? What's she look like? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Steven. Damn it. And then I go, oh, well, you know, she's. She's not bad. Look, I mean, she's around my taste. She uh, definitely a fighter. Can put up a good fight. She's not one of these, you know, wenches that you typically see in areas like this. Although I do appreciate. Yeah. Anything. Okay. Uh, anyway. And then I no, cut I... in. Tilly cuts in real quick. Uh, Revelling says, "Dina, isn't that the name of the thief woman that we were th- looking for?" Ah. Uh, oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. No. Fighter. <laughs> uh. Tall. Um. Well built, yeah. No, I I know Dina. Yes. Um, what do you need? Wait, from and, then, her? and then and then I go. You too. Did she? Did you? Did you and Dina like? Did you guys have a thing as well? Did she? No, take I don't. I don't mess with that. That's it's not smart. And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah. Tell me Let, about it. Let's find her. I just say and like just looking up at you too. Just looking off a little. Uh, bit. He leans down to you, Tilly, and he says. I think she's upstairs. If you go up that staircase over there, the red one, I think she's right up there. Why don't you go ask her to come back this way? Oh, oh, okay. And I no, and, and I, I just grab Tilly by the shoulder, and I just like <laughs> my my fingers just like clench on her, and I'm like, yeah. And I and I look at him. I'm like, are you serious? Is she upstairs right now? No, I'm just you know trying to get her something to distract her so she can. Chill out. Oh uh, no, she's pretty chill. She's pretty chill. Trust hey, me. Trust me. Whatever you say. And, and, Listen, and then I, I look down at Tilly and I just like give this like death glare of like, shut up. Shh. Dina, green. Uh, <laughs> green. If you want, if you want to find more information about Dina, if you want to, if you want to talk to her, you're gonna have to go to um, to Tyrus Cloran's uh, doctor shop in the Rise. It's, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, she makes her shop above it. Uh, you're going to have to go from here. Easiest way to get there is, is maybe to go down through, um, through the weeds, down, uh, pass, uh, all the way through Tyrene's whelping and then over down into the rise. 
Uh, it's it's not terribly nearby. It's over on the far side of uh, of Piranor. But yeah, no, uh, there's there's a very very large building, some some ancient Parthenon. Uh, it's on Lunescent Way. It's it's just standing right in the middle of it. It's a huge ancient building, columns all around. Usually there's as patients sort of slumped on the steps at all times. Anyway, that's uh, Tyrus Cloran's. Uh, Physic. You need to go there. She lives up above it. Okay. And I'm like, sort of like, just taking all this down mentally, and I'm like, oh man, yeah, I think that's definitely something. I'll have to, I'll have to find her tomorrow. It's getting a little late, and you know, I'm under the influence. I don't want to say something wrong. Obviously, you're familiar with her, and I last our last encounter, I just really pissed her off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Uh, definitely, definitely smart. So, so uh, I'm like, what do you what do you need from her? And I'm like, oh man, it's per- it's personal. I, I would get into it, but you know, now's not the time. It's a little. I I just want to relax, enjoy the alcohol or whatever the hell was in that whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, of course. Hey, listen, um, you and your friend like to party, right? Like, yeah. He uh, pulls a pouch from his belt and he opens it up, and inside you see. You see, as he opens it, there's just a puff of fine white powder that floats up from the top of the pouch. He says, here, take a whiff of this. I take it and I sniff it, but I don't, like, actually... Wait, oh, God, did I just take it? <laughs> I just sniffed yeah, you, you took it, it and you sniffed it. You, 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 you just you feel walk. this. God damn it. You feel this slam into the front of your head. Bah! Um, and you just immediately see, like, sparks across your vision and... You feel great. It's like your entire body relaxes and you don't have a care in the world and you feel highly energized. Highly. And um and you look up and you realize that you didn't mean to take a dose or anything like that, but you were just trying to find out what it was. Uh-huh. Um and you look up and he sees your your pupils just go and he says, "Yeah, right on. Here, you're going to want to uh a couch, and he puts an arm around you, and he heads back towards a a couch. I try back. to grab like, is there a woman on the way? Like a woman that looks like she's available? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. There's, like, there's like a couple of women who are like, <laughs> tell, tell us, tell us, the, How can you tell if a woman is available just by glancing at her? <laughs> <laughs> is she uh, looking at me and making eyes? And I just go, and I like, I like, if I can, I'm gonna try and like grab a woman and pull her over to the couch with me. I'm just saying. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you find someone who's been sort of like flitting from table to table and flirting with various people. And you, you grab onto her and, and you walk over to the couch. Okay, well, then I sit on the couch and, and sort of like I'm hitting on her and also trying to keep an eye on Tilly even though I'm out of my mind right now. And Got it. Yeah. Tilly's pulled you... up a chair and is gambling on the grubs at this point. <laughs> and... Uh, has tried to look for another shot of that green stuff and has tried to swipe one if she can. Okay. Tilly, why don't you roll a sleight of hand? Sure. Oh, nice. Even at disadvantage, Tilly's deft fingers slip one of the glasses off the table and you just down it? Oh, yeah. Nice. I'm liking yeah. this feeling. I've never felt you, this You are blasted now, Tilly. There's like bright lights sort of like glowing into existence and fading out from sort of everywhere. There's probably two or three a second within the room now. And you are pretty drunk. I mean, like this is full alcohol that you, that you grabbed. Um, and yeah, like the grubs, they're all like glowing and pulsing and they have like bright spots shimmering along the sides of them. Um, the man, Stiv, he comes back over to you and he's holding out this little pouch with a, a small plume of white powder dancing on top of it. And you can see inside of it sparkles and, and like glitter puffs sort of exploding and, and little tiny miniature fireworks going off inside of this pouch. What do you do? Um, I look over at Darius, who's probably yeah. sitting on the couch at this point, and yeah. he seems to be having a good time. So totally. I... I I take a whiff of that. Hell yeah! Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, immediately, just wham! It just full front in in your face, <laughs> just slams right between your eyes, and you see all of the colors in your vision just explode. This is back country, man. Yes, um, <laughs> see, Gregory, we're starting that orgy. 
<laughs> now back at Gregory and Galahan's place, uh, Lorenth has rolled out a large sheet of vellum that Gregory you brought downstairs, and he's sort of drawn um, just a, a, a rough shape of the of the city, just all of the districts, and he says. Let's see. Right. He's thinking to himself, and he's he's sort of chewing on the end of his um, of his pen, and he's getting just like a little dribble of black ink on his lip as he does it. He says, "Yes. Ah, uh, well, there's the guilt district, and he circles uh, an area hanging off the bottom edge of the city, and he says, "Yes. Ah, uh, I believe there's an abandoned." Abandoned livestock pen down there. Some sort of old uh, pig processing factory. We could use that as our crucible. Yes. Uh, guilt. Does it have Does it have walls? If we need to do construction work, it's best to keep it out of people's sight. Oh yes, yes. No, it, it does have walls. It's a. It, it used to be a, a meat processing plant. So uh, well contained, hidden. Uh, I don't generally like having people see that, so abandoned meat processing facility. Uh, yes. Now, the, the guilt district, mm, it's, uh, it's, its main business is money lending. There are many people there who are very stressed about profit and loss and and, and their loans, uh, it should be fairly easy to capitalize on <laughs> to capitalize on their distress, uh, some sort of mm, plague or perhaps simply liquidating all the accounts would would certainly create a, a large stress on the population. This sounds like maybe long route to end the destination. Yes, we don't we don't do scenic. Of course, I'm thinking. I'm thinking consternation about size of purse might not be sufficient. We want to hatch this egg soon, not later. Ah, yes, very well. Uh, hmm. uh, there's, the, there's always the cobblestones. We could uh, probably find some sort of old old uh, mine shaft back in, in, in Rom's masonry. Uh, it wouldn't be difficult, though it is a little bit non-central it's it's off on the very back end uh there's actually a bridge it's a, a rear entry to piranor very tight very hard to uh to get anything in or out now um yes um, i am uh, i am having some ideas about how we should do this but i would like to speak with other members of our party first they have information i think would be of use i see well there's one other one other that I know about, um, in in the Flop House, it's uh, it's a bit more centrally located, just north of fourteen. It's very poor district. Uh, I think there must be some sort of abandoned um, abandoned inn or or something like that, some sort of hovel that we can take over, and use for our purposes. Certainly, I am not worried about the real estate issue. Should be fine. Galahan kind of butts in and is like there. We're doing it there. I look at Galahan. I nod. Ah, oh, good. Yes. Well, um, excellent. Listen, I should go back to to my uh, humble abode and bring down all of my reading materials. Perhaps they can help us figure out what sorts of chemicals we'll need to acquire to create the effects we're going for. Good. Yes, do that. I want you to know, as long as you are working with us, uh, you cannot be bothered with other things. If you have projects, work to do, set them aside. I will make sure you stay fed and can pay your rent. Please. This work, and he taps the map, he says, this work is my life's work. It is of primary importance. Galahad hands him 300 gold pieces for, ah. like, any expense costs. Yes, Yes, of course, I can use this to, to procure uh, any number of, of resources. Yes, thank you. 
I'll take good care of this. And he slips it into his cloak and it just like vanishes inside of his clothes. Like it doesn't even make a bulge on this Mm -hmm. incredibly tall, skinny man. Um, And he sort of snaps his fingers and the the vellum just snaps into a roll and then jumps into his hand. And he says, well, are you satisfied? The flop house, yes, that's that's where you wanted. Is good start, but you will come to know this. We are never satisfied. Still more work to come. Yes. Yes, much work. Well, I'll take my leave. Thank you for dinner. It's been a long time since I've eaten such a rare beast. I nod. You're welcome. There will be more time in the future for wine and for food, for good company. If you need us, this is where we are. We will send someone for you when we have spoken with our friends. Yes. Very good. Send a message. Farewell. And I think, yeah, and I think at the door, I, I say to him one last like thing I, I say before he goes, I said, um, mm-hmm. whatever you were before, you are not dead anymore. Now you are important. You are part of something bigger. Guard it carefully. Tell no one. He um, He sort of twists his mouth up a little bit. He says... Doctor, I don't, I don't think you've understand. What I am now, I have been my whole life. We will see her returned, brother. And he and I, places a hand on your shoulder, and then he turns. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So I go back into, I go back to the other room, and where's, where's Galahan? What are you doing? Galahan's hands are like folded behind his back, and he's just watching the the night street. Mm-hmm. And he's watching like the old man kind of like hobble away. He's just okay. silent. Yeah, yeah. So I, I walk up to uh, to where you are, uh, and I uh, I say, um, for this, I suppose I can endure the city a little longer. How are you feeling? Conflicted. Why? About what? About my duty to people. Against my desires. I could see why you might be feeling that way. There is darkness ahead for us, but there is darkness behind as well. We have been planting seeds for so long, it can be hard to think about the harvest. I've been on this road for a while now. You say you have a duty to people. I'm wondering, is this true? That was an oath. And there's kind of like this brief flashback to him kneeling in front of his paladin mentor. Mm. And now, Shallahan, yeah. you're a paladin of vengeance, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah. So he's kind of like kneeling in front of his paladin mentor, and she's talking about how his, his duty to eradicate evil from the world at all costs. Mm-hmm. And he's agreeing with her. And then you cut back to him staring out the window and he doesn't quite agree with her anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's where his like inner turmoil is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thinks the world needs some evil, but if you're pulling the strings, you can dictate the evil. The only bad yeah. evil is the evil that you can't You're making control. a choice. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah and I give, I give you a, a second. Like I can see your, your deep in thought and I, I think that I probably feel like I feel that too like I, I definitely have some stuff in my past some some oath related things and I, I say to you um, I'm like uh, funny thing about an oath we swear them with words but it is action that matters what do we do with our hands in our limited time here in this world I think the dragons have given you a gift Galahan and I, I look at the egg uh, and I say um, I think they will forgive you bending your oath or breaking it for this sake. I think you're right. I kind of place my hand gently on his shoulder and then just head upstairs. Nice. Yeah, and I think so. While you while you go up the stairs, we hear the the heavy like booted footsteps as the you creaking. as you ascend. Yeah. yeah, and the creaking of the house. Um, I start to whistle. Um, I just whistle to myself some like kind of like cheerful tune as I'm like picking up plates and like going and like doing the dishes basically. Um, and 
Yeah, and I think I'm just like I'm just smiling the whole time. I just have this very like placid like things are going great kind of smile on my face. Nice. Okay, I think we should take our last break here. Come back in five minutes. We'll have the group all back together, and we'll start figuring out what the plan is from here on out. So don't go anywhere. We'll come back in five minutes for more of Week 36 of the West Marches.